Okay, welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this video, I want to talk about setting up a basic material in Blender using albedo, roughness, normal, and displacement maps. So to get started, the first thing you need are some texture maps. And a great place to find some is polyhaven.com. You don't need an account or a paid subscription or anything like that. Just go to the site, Browse through their library and find some textures you like. And the great thing about Polyhaven is not only do you get the texture maps, but they also give you a blend file that has the material already set up. Now, I already downloaded this stone floor material. And if I open the blend file, you can see that it contains a sphere and everything is already set up for the material. And you can use this material in your scene by simply appending it into your file and then apply it to your model. So I'm going to open a new file where I already have a plane set up with subdivisions and a subdivision surface modifier. So all I have to do is go to File, Append, and then browse to the location of my blend file, click Append, Go to Material, select the file, click Append. Now with the plane selected, if I go to the Materials tab, click the down arrow, select the stone floor, it applies it to the plane. And if I switch to the Shading tab, you can see that the material is already set up the same as it was in the other file. So yeah, having that blend file is pretty cool and it cuts down on the amount of work needed to set up a material. But what if you get some textures from another site that doesn't provide a blend file? Well, that's what this video is about, so let me close this file and get some textures. Another good place to get texture maps is Quixel.com. If you're working in Unreal Engine, you can link your Epic Games account and everything is free to use in the engine. But if you're working in Blender, you have to buy whatever you want to use. There is a small collection of free textures and assets that you can download, though. Just click the free button right here. And for this video, I'll be using this castle wall material. You'll need to create an account in order to download, but it's free to sign up. I've already downloaded these files, so Let's get started. Okay, I have a fresh new file open, so I will select everything and delete it. Then I will hit Shift A, add a plane, and set it to four meters. Then I'll hit Tab, go into Edit Mode, right click, Subdivide, and set the number of cuts to 40. Then I'll tab back over to object mode, come over to the modify panel, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And I'll leave these settings alone for now. Now I'm gonna be applying a wall material, so I need to rotate this around 90 degrees. So I'm gonna come up here to the rotate, Tool, I'll hold down Control, and then as I rotate, it'll snap to five degree increments. So I'm going to rotate it around to 90 degrees. Then I'll switch to the Move tool. I'm going to move it up two meters, so it's now sitting on the XY plane. Now I'll switch to Render Preview mode, and I see that I don't have a light source. So let me quickly add an HDRI image. If you don't know how to work with HDR files, um, I already did a video about that, and I will put a link to it in the description below so you can check it out. Next, I'll go to Render Properties, switch to Cycles, and come down here to Film and select Transparent to get rid of the background image. 
Now I can start creating the material, so I'll switch to the Shading tab, switch over to Render Preview, and with the plane selected, I'm going to click the New button, and that will drop in a Principal BSDF node and a Material Output node. And I'll change the material name to Castle Wall. Now I'll open my Explorer window. I'll grab the Albedo map and drag and drop it down into the Node Editor. And then I'll connect up the color output to the base color input. And now we have the texture applied, but it's rotated 90 degrees, so I'm going to have to fix that. But before I do, I need to make sure I have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So I'll go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type Node into the search box, and you can see that mine is already enabled, but if, if yours isn't, just put a, a check in this box, then come down here and save Preferences, and then you can close this window. Now in the editor, you can uh, click on the albedo map, and then hit Control t and that will add in a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. To rotate the texture, I'm going to put in 270 into the Z rotation. And then I also want to scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to type in 1.5 into the X, Y, and Z parameters. And that looks a bit better. Now I'm going to move these nodes over a little bit, and then I'll hit Shift A, and I'll type in RGB into the search box, and I want RGB curves. And if I hold it right over the top of this connection wire and drop it, it'll automatically plug itself in. In the RGB curves, if you click anywhere on this line between the light and dark, it'll place a point. So I'm going to put two of those. And if I click and drag on these points, you'll see that it'll, it'll make the texture either darker or lighter. So I'm going to adjust these a little bit into a sort of an S-shaped curve. You get a little bit of contrast out of the image. And I'll leave it like that for now. I can come back and make more adjustments later. Next, I'll go back to my Explorer window, and I'll grab the roughness texture, drag it down in here. Now I need to plug the vector from the mapping node into the vector on the roughness node, so that it will pick up the rotation and scale to match the albedo map. And for this map, I'm going to change the color space to non-color. Then I'll hit Shift A and type color into the search box, and I want a color ramp. And I'll plug the color output into the FAC, and then I'll plug the color into Roughness. And you can see that nothing happened in the viewport, didn't change at all. But if you grab this black slider and you bring it all the way up here, you can see that texture starts getting glossy, like it's wet. So that can be useful later on. I'm going to leave it set back down here for now, and I'll come back to it later. Now I'll go back to my Explorer window, grab the normal map, drag it down in here. And again, I'll grab the vector output and come down and plug it in to the vector on the normal map. Set the color space to non-color, and Shift-A, and I'm going to type in normal, 
and grab a normal map node. And I'll plug the color into color and normal into normal. And you can see we start to get a little bit of detail coming out. Now I'm going to go back to my Explorer window one more time and grab the displacement map. Drag it down in here. I'm going to move these down a little bit. And I'll plug the vector into the vector and set the color space to non-color. Next, I'll hit Shift A, type in displace. I want a displacement map. And I'll plug the color into height. And I'll drag this down so I can plug the displacement into the displacement. Now, you can see that. We still have a flat image. Nothing happened. And that's because we need to come over to the material properties. Scroll down to displacement, settings, and we want to change the displacement to displacement and bump. And now it's way too strong. So I'll come back over here to the scale and I'm going to set this to 0.15. And that looks pretty good. But I can see there are some jagged edges, so I'm going to right click and shade smooth. And that helps a little bit. But now there is one more thing you can do to make this look even better. You come over to render properties and you change the feature set to experimental. And you'll get this little warning symbol. If you hover your cursor over it, it says that this is an incomplete feature that might be broken or change in the future. So use it your own risk, I guess. Um, but once you get that set, you can come back to your subdivision surface modifier. And now you have this adaptive subdivision option. And if you enable it, it just gives you a little bit more to work with, a little more subdivision to work with. And it, the way it works is areas of your image or of your object that are closer to the camera are going to get more subdivision, while areas that are further away will get less subdivision. But anyway, I think it makes it look a little bit better. Now you can go back and tweak your settings if you want, if you wanted to try and boost it a little more on the displacement, or if you wanted to try to add a little more strength to the normal map. Or you can come back here and play with this slider, add a little wetness to the image to the uh to the material and there is one more thing that you can do if you want um this material is looking i don't know maybe a little washed out so i drag the albedo over here and hit shift a and look for brightness contrast and drop that in Set that to 0.1 and then shift A again and look for hue saturation. Drop that in. You can affect the color and the contrast of the image. I don't know why I keep saying image of the material just by playing with the values. And there's a lot more nodes you can play with. Um, 
but this basic material setup works fine for most of the things that I do. Okay, um, that's about it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.